Hello, welcome to WLA Weekly. I'm your host, Tally Campbell. On July 2nd, a press conference was held here at the Langley Event Center in order to reintroduce professional lacrosse back to the province of British Columbia and welcome the newest NLL franchise, the Vancouver Stealth. How long has this been in the works to come to Langley? Well, Langley, you know, we had the first preseason game here in December of 2011 and it was sold out between the Stealth and the Rock and that really created momentum for a dialogue and uh, which really culminated into t today. Um, you know, the Stealth uh, were, were, you know, gave it their best effort to make it work in, in Everett. Um, we have very passionate fans there in Everett. There just weren't enough of them. And they really weren't drawing enough of the fans from uh, Metro Seattle up to Everett that we had all hoped they would. Um, but there, there were a significant number of fans coming down from BC during the, the, the Stealth's four years there. And uh, given the fact that they already had a lot of fans here and having that championship game here with the great crowd that we had, I think really was probably the tipping point for the organization to make, make the move. How does it feel to complete the deal, come to Langley? It feels great. Uh, I've made no secret that coming to uh, Vancouver has been our number one expansion target market. And um, while it's not an expansion team, uh, we we are finally back here, and uh, it it feels great. And it and it also um, stabilizes a franchise which was you know not performing well in Everett, and allows the. To, to really solve a problem and not beyond solve a problem but have a great asset and having the Vancouver market force as well. And uh, with the Vancouver Ravens, were you a part of that when they were here? Well, I was in the league at the time. Um, the Ravens were um, had done some great things creatively and marketing wise. The challenge with the Ravens is they were, uh, you know, simply their ownership group wasn't that well capitalized and they had some, some uh, owners who had pulled out from the original ownership group and that caused the, the remaining owners to really be chasing their own tail for their entire existence. And it was unfortunate because they did a lot of great things in, in grassroots and marketing. Uh, there's, but the ownership here that we have with the Stealth is, uh, and Denise Watkins and Bill Watkins are tremendous, they're world class. And um, I mean, if, these, if, if the Watkins had owned the Ravens, uh, the Ravens still be playing. You mentioned a bit during the press conference about how important it is to work with the minor leagues and as well with the BCLA. Can you talk a bit more about that? I think, well, we know that um, if, if we're going to be the marquee pro franchise and, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll be the face of the game in the, in the lower mainland and, and really in the province of British Columbia now with the uh, with, uh, professional team of the National Lacrosse League and I, I really think it's um, incumbent upon us to to um, make sure that we reach down in the community and, and help to uh, to grow the the game in, in the minor with our minor associations and the BCLA so we, we expect to work uh, hand in hand with them to make sure that um, we develop a strong partnership with them and, and do what we can to help uh, grow the game in terms of um, providing assistance in terms of clinics and coaching and um, any, anything we can do. You know, we've been successful with that. We were in, in uh, Everett uh, with our junior stealth academies and uh, our junior stealth teams, and, and uh, we, we think we want to, you know, carry on doing as much as we can to help grow the game. And, you know, that's, it's, it, it starts at the grassroots level, and, and uh, we really think it's, um, you know, we, we think it's our, our duty to do as much as we can to help that. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate it. Have a good season uh, next year. All right. Thanks very much. Yeah. We kick up the action on Thursday night at Queen's Park Arena where the Samboys were taking on the Victoria Shamrocks where they pulled out the upset, beating the Shamrocks 13-12. to Bellies Keegan Ball netted four goals and two assists while Bellies kept Jeff Shatler off the score sheet only letting him get one assist in the 13-12 win. It was a doubleheader Friday night as the Adonacs were taking on the Lakers and the Thunder were at Bear Mount Arena taking on the Victoria Shamrocks. First the A's versus the Lakers and it was a battle for the entire 60 minutes with Burnaby taking away in the third with a 14-10 win. Burnaby's Robert Church was named first star with five assists. Dane Stevens was kept off the stars list but had a great game with four goals and two assists in the win.
And at Bear Mountain Arena, the Thunder managed to keep the Shamrocks to only scoring six goals in the game, giving them their third loss in a row, 11-6. Langley's Brody McDonald stood on his head, stopping 43 shots, while Daniel McQuaid scored twice in the game. On Saturday, the Thunder drove down to Nanaimo to take on the Nanaimo Timurin, and after 60 minutes, it was all tied up five apiece. And in overtime, Thunder's Ethan Iannucci would net two goals to take the game, 8-6. Then it was Paul Barber and Thunder's Mitch McRickle also added a goal in OT. Zach Boychuk stood on his head, saving 56 shots in the loss. And in the other game of the night, it was another nail-biter, but with just minutes to go, the Quitlam Adonax would pull away, beating the Maple Ridge Marauds 7-6. In the last game of the week, it saw the Nanaimo team taking on the Maple Ridge Marauds in Maple Ridge, and what a game it was. The team would take away with a five unanswered goals in the first period, however, Maple Ridge would fight back. And we were going to overtime at a 9-9 tie. However, Blake Kennedy would score the game-winning goal. Timberman win 10-9. In the standings now, Langley Thunder now sit in first place with 22 points. Victoria Shamrocks behind them with 18. Lakers with 16 with one game in hand. The Burrard sit in fourth with 14 points. The Sambles and Adonax are tied with 11. And the Timberman are crawling back with 10 points. Thank you for watching this edition of WLA Weekly. I'm your host, Tally Campbell. For all your local sports, keep it right here to VSBN.ca.